Hey guys, how's it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how directives work in Angular. So what are directives? Well, there are three types of directives in Angular. The first is components, which are directives with a template, but they're not usually referred to as directives. Usually when we talk about directives, we're talking about structural directives or attribute directives, which is what I'll be focusing on today. Okay, so let's look at some built-in directives from Angular. So let's um, jump straight into the code. All right then, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a new example project. All right, so once the Angular application has been created, I'm going to just change directory uh, and go into that project. So directives examples, and I'm gonna open this up in my code editor so that we can now get started with the code. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is uh, show you an example of some built-in directives in Angular. So let's go to appcomponent.html and let's delete this placeholder content. And I'm going to, um, first of all, create a property in the component class. And I'm gonna call this um, test boolean of type boolean. And I'm going to set that as false. Um, so set that as false for the default. And I'm then going to go to the HTML. And I'm then going to create a button that says toggle boolean value. And I'm going to put a click event on that. On button click. And then create that method here. And then I'm going to toggle the boolean value. So this dot test boolean is equal to not this dot test boolean. That's how you toggle the value. And now I'm going to go back to the HTML, and I want to create a div. And in this div, I'm going to have a paragraph tag, and this will say the boolean value is true save that and um, let's just quickly serve this application to show you what it looks like at the moment all right so once it's served we can go to localhost 4200 and we have this button here which we created here and we have this paragraph tag which says the boolean value is true which is great and now we can make it so that this paragraph tag with this text only shows when the boolean value is true so let's go back to the code and let's use the built-in directive called ngif which is a structural directive and um, structural directives structural directives are responsible for html layout they shape or reshape the dom structure ngif is an example of this and with structural directives we have to use this asterisk here so let's do that now and he will just say if the boolean the test boolean is true there we go. And we can now save this and go back to our app. And it's not showing anymore because we set the test boolean value as false. So it's not showing because this ng if is saying that this code here, that this paragraph tag here will only be in the DOM if this expression is true, which it obviously isn't because we set the value as false. And now we can test if this will show when we click this button. And it should, because when we click this button, it will then run this code here, which will toggle the value of the Boolean. All right then, so now let's go to the app and let's click this button. Okay, and it's not showing. And let's see why that is. Okay, so that's not working because I misspelt this. So let's put the T there and let's save that. And now it should work. If I now click this button, we now get the Boolean value is true. And now it should disappear once I press this button again. There we go. And now it's able to toggle the value of the Boolean. The ng if directive is removing and adding that paragraph tag to the DOM. Okay, so that's a basic example of ng if. There is also another very common structural directive called ng4, which I'm gonna show you now. In uh, the component class, I'm going to create an array. So I'm going to say collection of strings. 
which would be of type string array. And I'm going to set that um, to some random strings. Lorem ipsum, hello world. All right, so we have some very generic strings in this array. And now we want to loop through these and show them in the UI. So let's create a div. So let's create a paragraph tag and let's put the ng4 on here. And the structure of the for loop is let variable name, which we can call um, random string of, and then the collection name, um, which is in the component class. So here it's collection of strings. So then I can copy that and paste that here. And now using string interpolation, we can now show the value of the random string. So save this. And now we have all of the strings that we defined in the array, right? And we can add some more and, and see. So there you go, if I save that, and we now get the new values here. So now we have a for each loop that is looping through the collection and is showing each individual item. So there we go, that's how you do that with ng4. So the next thing I wanna show you is how to build a simple attribute directive. And it's pretty simple and it's, um, and it's shown quite well here in the documentation. So uh, we can now just walk through uh, this example here, which is a text highlight directive. So let's um, go to our code here and let's um, create a terminal. So let's create a directive using the Angular CLI. So let's do ng generate directive and let's call it highlight which is um, what it says here and we now have the directive file here and we can now um, write our code here okay so let's look through the documentation so the first thing we want to take note of is the directive CSS attribute selector which is app highlight and it's the square brackets that make it an attribute selector meaning that within the HTML we can um, type in, uh, for example, um, here, app highlight, and that would be a valid use of the directive syntax because we are using the square brackets surrounding the name of the directive. So that's um, how you do that. So to get a reference to the elements that the directive is being applied to, we can, um, we can within the constructor, get the element. Okay, and here we can now change uh, properties on that native element. So we can do uh, dot native element dot style dot background color is equal to yellow. Okay, save that and um, save this as well with the directive being applied to these random strings here. And let's go to our app. And now, as you can see, we have these yellow backgrounds on um, these items here, which is awesome, right? And we don't have it on this paragraph tag here because we haven't applied the directive to that. So that's how you build a very basic highlight directive. We um, can change this up a bit and uh, put this to any color. So say red, for example, and we'll now get red or green. Or we can do something a bit more interesting um, using the renderer in Angular. So we can um, get the renderer. Of type renderer2, because that's the latest version that we'll be using. Um, and we can then use this dot renderer dot, oh yeah, um, private renderer here, yeah. Um, dot add class to the element and we can add the class of test and when we inspect these elements here we can see that they have a class of test so now we can actually um, go to the CSS and add this class here 
and say that the um, that the font size has to be 20 pixels and that the font color has to be red and if we save this now oh it's the text color uh, no um yeah so save that now and now we have this being updated here with the test class styling which is pretty cool so that is how you build a basic directive in angular